Welcome back to Crew Build Series. This is episode number 108. So we're here with the road train tractor. Last couple episodes, we've been focusing on trying to get some fuel. So if we go ahead and look here, we have presently uh, 295 liters of jet fuel in FJ Warner docks here. And we have uh, 52,000 liters of diesel. So a couple episodes ago, went ahead and took the Albatross from FJ up to the military base. We can sell the jet fuel off the docks here at the military base. So that's our main money stream right now is doing that. And so what I want to do here is I want to take the road train tractor and I want to head out of FJ and I want to go up to the oil pumping rig and I want to extract all of the jet fuel out of there. Likely we're going to do jet fuel and diesel because I don't think we're going to have enough jet fuel to fill both tanks. So we might as well uh, take both and bring them over here. And then at some point, maybe we'll go sell some of that diesel. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start up the tractor here. So this tractor needs to be finished at some point, but uh, there's no rush on it, it works, so. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hook up to our kite here, which is our rear trailer. And so we're just looking for the kite there. And you wanna have a good setup. I'm gonna try to do it all with the mirror, we'll see. Sometimes the game makes it hard. And just steer it gently into the kite. And just try to get it right on. We'll see if I can hit it with the mirror. It's a lot easier IRL. You can stick your head out the window, which is often what we'll do. All right, I need to pull up. So do a little pull up to realign the trailers. try to hit this uh, pintle. Yeah, we're probably pretty close here. Yeah, we're not too far off. It's pretty close. So I'm just going to do it first person so it's not taking us all day. So when you do your pull-up, you want to actually do something. I notice a lot of new tractor-trailer drivers will... They will not make any changes when they do their pull-up. And then, you know, that's wasted uh, effort, essentially. You, you want to make a change when you do your pull-up, and then you want to make changes when you do your backup. That will get you where you want to go. We gotta be close here. Gots to be close. So when I do this pull up here, I need to go left. And then I need to keep going left here. I'm gonna straighten out. And then we're gonna go in reverse. And we'll try to line this pencil up. There we go, that's better. There we go. All right, good. So we're hooked. So let's go ahead and we'll set the brake. Go into neutral. Set both brakes. And we'll go ahead to the back and we'll hook up the light cord. I need to drop this hose here. All right, light cord's hooked up. Now we can control the brakes on the kite. So let's go ahead and hook up. So release both brakes. And we'll head on out. And I will see you guys when we get there.
right, so here we are arriving at the pumping station. This is working well here. As you can see, it pumps the entire time I'm gone, so don't really need to uh, get too involved with it. Just let it pump. Each of those tanks is about what these tanks are for the truck. Of course, I could put more tanks, but, you know, I don't like overdoing it. You know, I really just don't. It's, um, you know, kind of my whole thought process is I want to be a little bit realistic. I don't want to have too much money at any given time. And if we, you know, if we made it so that I could easily just come over here and have a ton of extra fuel, it would just uh, make it too easy to make money. So we don't want that. All right, so front one is going to be, let's see, it doesn't really matter, but we're going to plug in. You just don't want to grab oil. So that will be diesel in the lead, and the kite will be jet fuel. So. And here we go. Put jet fuel in here. We'll check the values. We should be good. This pretty much, the station just runs the whole time. So there's 49,000. I can't remember if that's liters or gallons. And then we have double. So we have double the oil storage, and the point of that is it's... Uh, Pretty much one to one, so you know we have the oil, and so you know by having two oil tanks and one of diesel and one of jet fuel, that allows us to you know process 100%, and then this will always pump and re replenish. But at some point, I'll try to release this. This fractioning tower works really well. Uh, some of the keys to making your fractioning towers work well is you notice this is very thin, and that holds a limited supply of oil. So if we look in there, it, it only has 1,400 liters. Uh, think of it this way. If you take a very, very large pot of water and you put it in your stove, it's going to take a long time to boil. You're trying to put a lot of energy into that water and change its temperature. You know, heat is just vibration. You're essentially trying to vibrate the water to get it up to temperature, and it requires a lot of energy. But if you take a tiny little thin uh, veneer of water and put it in a pot, it will very quickly Boil, evaporate, boil and evaporate, you know, so it gets up to temperature very quickly. And so the same thing is true here. What I'm doing is taking in cold oil and I'm putting it through a preheater. So that tries to get the temperature up a little bit. So as it comes out of the oil tanks, it goes into my preheater. Then it goes in there. So that just brings up the temperature a little. Then it goes into a cycler here. So the cycler is then continually heating the oil in the column. And so what that allows me to do is pretty much run at a constant oil temperature of over 300 degrees. We just have to get over 300 degrees for the fraction to take place. So it uh, works pretty well there. So I'm going to go ahead and time lapse you guys out. This will take a little while to pump, and I'll see you when it's done. All right, so pumped all this fuel. Really didn't take all that long. We have a considerable amount in here. This looks this must be in liters, so 55,000 liters. And then I think the other one's in gallons. I need to fix those so they're showing the same units. Stick that in there. One of these is mine. We'll take it. All right, and we're good to go. So let's just quickly look up at the pump station. And as you can see, this should be uh, pretty close to empty, but it's refilling because this constantly runs. That's also refilling. And then because these oils are pretty much always filled, you notice the quantity is pretty high. So let's go ahead and we'll take this back to FJ. So this is going to be helpful to put some more fuel in. Just this tank of jet fuel, the one in the back, that's worth about 175000 Now, if we look at our money, we're at uh, 447000 Seems like a lot, but Triton costs about 480 something thousand to launch, and it has 172,000 liters of diesel. So this will allow me, with this new, uh, this new diesel now, to be able to hopefully launch Triton and FJ and get it close to being full of fuel. And then if Triton is full of fuel, that will make it so that we can either transport and sell it out of Triton, or we can just utilize it for Triton, and it's going to be really nice and convenient to be able to move Triton around and be able to put some diesel in the bases. All right, so I will see you guys when we get there.
here we are arriving at FJ. So we're just going to go ahead and I will despawn it into the base. That will take all the fuel in there. And that's just way I don't have to pump it out. So sometimes I find it fun to pump it out. Sometimes I just uh, do the shortcut and despawn it in the base. So let's go ahead and we'll slow down here. And let's get all the way in. It should recall all the fuel into the base, but uh, we'll just be careful. I'd like to finish this road train tractor at some point, but as with everything, nothing is ever done in Stormarks. It's always a work in progress. All right, so let's go ahead and we will despawn this. I will do the old precautionary save. All right, and let's go ahead to the workbench and despawn it. We'll look at the fuel first. So we have 483 liters on jet and 52,000 in diesel. Now we'll go ahead and we'll despawn that and let's check our fuel here. So there's 55,000 liters of jet fuel in there. And there is 108,000 liters of diesel. So uh, again, just to keep that in mind, that is uh, about 62,000 liters less than what Triton can hold in diesel. So that's a, uh, seems like a lot of diesel, but that will fill Triton. That will last us a long time. That's not as though Triton will burn that quickly, but it's part of the ballasting system. You know, a lot of ships will use the fuel as ballast as well. All right, so the next thing we want to do here is let's go ahead and transport this fuel and try to get it sold. So what I think we're going to use here is we're going to use the Albatross again. It's just a really fast and efficient way to do it. Thematically, it's a little bit weird to be transporting fuel with a with an airplane, but uh, we're going to do it. And so let's go ahead and we'll grab the pallet. So let's see, jet pallet. Oh, that's mini truck jet pallet. That's the wrong one. Let's go ahead and grab the right one. Should be this one. I just want to check something really quick here. We get a, we have to paste it first. So let's grab it and paste it. So should be able to fit five of these in here. There's $175,000 worth of jet fuel that's going to be going in here. All right, so here we are with Albatross. I put the five fuel pallets in there. So we have them full of jet fuel right now. And that's... Uh, going to be about $175,000 worth of jet, so good bit of money there. That will help get us to the point where we can really start to use Triton. Have plenty of cash to do so. So let's go ahead and start firing up battery. We'll do one for now. Power connect. APU is coming on. Uh, we want beacon is coming on. Let's go ahead and start one. So fuel valve one and start. Fuel valve two. Let's watch the NP come up. go. Two's coming up. Set the flaps. Set altitude of 2,000 feet. Heading, runway heading. Good. Start three. Crank it on three here. Alright, crank on four. Spool in four. I'll uh, pre-select altitude hold and heading hold. I'm just going to bring up the frequency for military base. This will uh, allow me to use my ADF system. I could put in the GPS, but I'm going to use the uh, the frequency. So it's 600. So we want to go over to our radio page, and we'll be six. And we'll go back to our bearing page, and then we'll go ahead and we'll do radio. And that's a 356, which is north 14 nautical miles. That yeah, makes sense, and let's taxi on out. I'm just going to go in third so we don't clip something on the way out. As the vehicle sometimes moves in the workbench, as you probably used to. Alright, so here comes Albatross. So Albatross is a really good cargo plane for doing this sort of thing. Pretty efficient. Can take the take this stuff long uh, distances really well. So it'd be nice if at some point the devs would get back to surge pricing was problematic. It'd be nice if they would come up with some sort of system to make it work a little bit better. You know, the it just was you couldn't sell your stuff. It was happening too quick. It would be better if it was, for example, a, a proper supply demand system where, say, you know, uh, at that base you need a hundred thousand liters of jet fuel once it reaches 100,000 liters of jet fuel then it starts to go down at a lower price so it, it still has an accommodation of supply demand if you 
for example, if I dump a million liters of jet fuel, I'm going to be selling it for almost nothing because they're, it's a glut. So, uh, Let's go ahead. We'll click some lights on here. I should have the generators on already, but I don't. I have my APU on, so that's giving me plenty of power. All right, here we go. Airspeed's alive. V1, rotate. Positive rate, gear's coming up. Over 100 knots, we're gonna go flaps up. Autopilot's coming on. And at 1,000 feet, we're gonna go ahead and we'll turn nav and heading. And there we go, we're turning towards. And we'll go ahead and start bringing our prop back. And we'll go all the way to uh, max efficiency. So max endurance is what this prop setting is called, IRL. And this will give us the best fuel economy. Again, we're trying to make money here. We're not trying to lose it. So it uh, gives us about... Uh, we lose about 30% of our speed, but we're gaining 70% in fuel efficiency, so it's definitely worth doing this. All right, and I will see you guys when we get there. starting to come in here, I'm going to go ahead and take the autopilot off, hand fly it. I know that's anathema to many, but we're going to do that. And so it's up here off to our right, a, a, a three island archipelago that's right there. That's where the military base is. It's right behind the post at the moment, which happens, so we can expect that. And it should be showing up here right in a second. Want to turn early we want to line up for the runway so this here is the hospital island and that is beginner base so easy to spot it there it is right there coming up behind the post runway is right there we can go ahead and grab our binoculars and look and as you can see the runway is going right there so we're lining up for the runway now all right we're gonna go ahead and start bringing that prop full forward landing gear is coming down and we'll turn in Lights are set. All right, I'm gonna roll 
out a little bit here. Prop should be full forward now. We got a traffic at uh, 11 to 10 o'clock, about uh, eighth of a mile. All right, flaps are coming in. We're gonna go full flaps. Now we need to trim, trim, trim as the flaps come in. There comes my speed dropping down as the flaps are adding drag. And there's the runway. So adding some trim, pit power or configuration changes we need to trim. So runway's off to my right, so we're gonna start coming over a little bit. Need to align. Is it? Yeah, it's a little bit to the right. That tree line, we should be coming in parallel to the tree line, so start moving over to the side here. Look more to the east. There we go, lights come on. So, flaps are set, lights are set, landing gear is down three green before landing checklist is complete. Again, checklist important. But, uh, that's how you prevent disaster, landing with your gear up and whatnot. So, it's good to have a little checklist. Alright, so we're good here. Pretty good alignment. We're uh, actually pretty good on, uh, on our glide slips. Looking pretty good. We're going to start slowing down here. Come in on final, and we're getting down to our minimum speed here, so let's keep it about 70 knots is good for approach. And again, it's not a tiny little Cessna. We're going to fly it all the way to the ground with power on. We don't chop the power like a Cessna. Take a little power off here. We don't want to come in fast, right around 70 knots. There we go. A little bit of a crosswind. You notice I'm angled a little bit to the right. That's for the crosswind correction. And then as we touch down, we're going to kick that out. So go and we'll go right into reverse and beta beta reverse let's hit the brakes let's do this first turn off here there we go go ahead and make this first turn here and I just don't want to chop that turn too much I want to make sure we don't uh, run off the Taxiway. So the hangar door is already open. So our wing should be clearing fine. And we're going to turn right in. We want to follow that center taxi line there. And bring it back to power a little bit just to help the turn. There we go. And we're going to hit straight ahead, build a taxi ready. You wouldn't really taxi in a hangar like this. You'd be all right going this way, but you wouldn't want the props, uh, the thrust blown in. All right, so we tag the wing a little bit. It's a little bit tough to get in here. Let's go ahead and set the brake. We'll kill our engines. And if we can't recall it, I will go ahead and we will grab the tug. So, gens are coming off. We'll leave the battery on and we'll leave the uh, APU on. Did I turn on APU or ground power? APU is on. Perfect. Alright, so let's go ahead and we will put the landing lights on, but we'll go see if I can recall this. Should be able to get it. Let's go ahead and grab it. Beautiful. So now we should have all this fuel in this base. So, uh, as you can see here, 27,000 liters. Beautiful. Alright, so that's great. So let's go ahead and let's grab the mini truck. And then I want to grab the pump. Make sure I fix something here. I did not. Okay, so let's fix this first. Let's go ahead and load the pump. I had to fix something, and I did not do it on the most recent version. So let's do that. Now let's go ahead and save this as the pump. Nice. All right, grab the mini truck again. Put in the module. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and let's start pumping fuel here. So this will be our sale, and we can get up to 175,000. I might only do 100 grand. Let's see. You know, 
I might do sell it all just because it's uh, it's nice to have a little bit of extra than to not have enough money. So. Fix that. There we go. So I love this little mini truck. It's a lot of fun having little ground vehicles to do this stuff. And we called the tower. They clear us across. So check both directions. So a nice efficient system we have now for getting some money when we need it. You know, the, uh, the oil update, you know, some people poo-poo it, but I think it was a great update to be able to do some more late game stuff. It's really kind of a nice logistics thing to be able to uh, move all that fuel. Love to see them work on the metals of Industrial Frontier. I think that was a uh, that was a misstep with the way they did that. The logistics don't make sense, and so it would be nice if they would fix that, uh, make that work a little bit better. All right, so we'll go ahead and stop here first. Let's go ahead and set the parking brake. And where are we at? Uh, we want jet fuel. We want to pump out. Let's go ahead and hook up to... That's actually... I need to drop this for a second. Let's grab this one. All right, grab this back. Up, up, up. They're labeled wrong. That's dangerous. There we go. All right. Keep forgetting this is right-hand drive. I have the brake on. And we'll leave the engine running. We need the electricity to run the pump. Actually, not the pump. We need it to run the, uh, the winch. All right, good. Let's go ahead and shut that off. Let's grab our hose here. It's pumping. And let's check our money. And as you can see, our money is climbing. So we're making money here. So currently right now at 489000 we should be able to launch Triton. The issue is this. We can launch Triton, but we're not going to be able to launch Katie did without some extra money. We can currently now, we don't have to buy the fuel anymore. We have 108,000 liters stored at FJ, so we're going to go ahead and we'll grab a uh, price point at FJ. And that way we can get Triton in the world. So kind of the plan going forward is spawn Triton over here at FJ, and we'll probably head up to our new island that we bought. And Triton can be stored in this island. I can also build some bases, so that's kind of the plan of what to do. And I think that would be kind of cool. It would be really nice to get Triton back at the game. I think that will be a lot of fun. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.